Hello everyone and welcome back to day 38 of Bitwise where we code a complete software hardware stack for a simple computer from scratch. So today we continue the, uh, the fourth saga. Um, last time I was saying that I wanted to do a, uh, a sort of very prepared tutorial stream on how to write assembly code uh, in a thorough way for people who sort of understand C programming and kind of showing how to translate all the different constructs in C that differ from assembly into assembly in a, a systematic way. Um, and I decided that really deserves more preparation. I want to do a good job of that and, and have a bunch of, of, of examples worked out in advance. So I've been working on that uh, and we'll continue uh, polishing that over the weekend and may ask some people for feedback, um, but expect that next week, uh, probably Monday, next, uh, next stream, uh, because I, I want that to be kind of a reference stream that I can point people to and, and also maybe serve as the basis of, a, uh, of an article um, covering the same material. So um, I thought instead uh, we would try to not finish the fourth implementation, but get it to a point where it's fairly, like it's sort of a solid base and um, we, we can kind of leave it, well, I don't know if I want to leave it right now, but um, kind of put it in a, like a good checkpoint basically in terms of it being uh, usable for, for real work in some sense. So, um, so I think I'm just going to continue where I left off and um, Okay, Firefox wants to restart. I'm not gonna allow you to. All right, um, let's see where we were. Let's see if I remember where we were before I left off uh, the stream last time. I think I just, maybe the thing I did change off stream was I uh, re maybe rejiggered some of the assembly code. Uh, although I plan to rewrite all of this in fourth. Um, there's a bit of a bootstrapping issue, but um, anyway, for now, this is in assembly, and um, one thing I added is uh, a keyword, which we'll try to read from the buffer if the buffer is not empty, so you can put string data here, and uh, then when, once the buffer expires, uh, it will read from, uh, you know, uh, the UART, basically. Uh, which is connected to standard input output in the terminal for now. But um, this word is actually not being used right now uh, because this is using, th this is intended to be called from fourth code. This is, uh, this stuff here is directly reading from the input buffer. But, uh, but yeah, so this was one of the things we did last time, which is a very simple parser that just skips white space and then um, puts everything after the white space up to the next white space or terminal character. Uh, puts it in, uh, in in a global buffer and then returns the uh, the pointer and length to that buffer so you can do stuff with it. Um, I think we called this something else last time. I think I called this XT last time, but I verified that in real fourth this is usually called um, two CFA, and so this means two CFA. CF stands for code field, A stands for address, so code field address. So this takes a pointer to a header, and it basically just you know computes the the offset. Um, to the payload after the variable length name field, doing all the alignment and so on. And similarly here, there's something to get the data field, which is you know skipping, uh, basically just you know skipping four bytes for the uh, for the code field uh, and looking at the remainder. And so uh, the thing we had last time, which I will show again, um, is that we read a word from the input buffer, which right now is just you know a hard coded string buffer. Uh, we look it up at the dictionary, which returns the, you know, the the pointer to the beginning and the length of of a buffer containing that word, um, and we convert that to the code field, and then we execute the code field. And so this is basically going to, you know, it, it starts pointing to this buffer, it reads the one, it looks up the corresponding dictionary entry, and there's a match. Um, in fact, one right now, one is a hard-coded entry. It's not actually a general numeric parser. There's just an entry in the dictionary called one, which pushes a one on the stack, uh, and similarly for zero. So, um, you know, look, uh, parses it, uh, looks up the entry, executes it, which has the effect of pushing a one on the stack, advances to the next word, and, and continues. And so this pushes one on the stack, one on the stack, adds them, so now we have two on the stack. Then we call this user to find word twice, which is going to double it uh, to produce four, and then we do a put digit, which is going to print it to standard out. And so um, 
the way I have this set up for this little test loop is that after uh, after each of these steps, it's going to read a digit from, and I guess I should just say get char actually. Um, it reads a, you know, it just waits for a, a key to be pressed, it just as a, as a sort of throttling for this infinite loop. So it doesn't just spin infinitely uh, fast. Uh, and so we can kind of single step this by pressing enter here, basically. Uh, the drop is because we don't care about the character we get from get char. We're just really calling get char in order to uh, pause, you know, wait for uh, for the user to to signify that they want to continue executing. And so um, if we run this and I press enter, you're not going to be able to see what's going on right now because we don't have debug features at the fourth level uh, and it's too inconvenient to show it uh, via the, uh, the the machine level debugger. Um, but basically, as I'm pressing enter now, it's, well, I guess it's already executed. Uh, I, I guess maybe I should do this. That would work too. Um, it shouldn't really matter. So as I'm pressing enter, uh, it's going to step through and execute uh, the words in this input buffer. So push one, push one, add them double it, so now four is there. Now when I press enter, it should execute the put digit, and we get a four. Um, and uh, so that's where we were. Um, all right, so this is just a test loop. Um, right, so right now we basically have an immediate interpreter. So assuming we've somehow used the assembler to hardwire in some definitions uh, and dictionary entries and stuff like that, we can now you know, we now have an inter a fourth interpreter, basically, uh, which is already quite useful. You can actually bootstrap a lot from there. Um, but um, the uh, the fourth interpreter can basically conventionally be in two different modes, uh, which which changes how it treats each word. So it's always, excuse me, it's always basically going to do, um, usually, uh, let's just pretend for now. It's always going to do three these, these three steps to read a word, look it up, and so on. Uh, actually, it's not going to go all the way to the third step here, but it's going to parse the word and look it up uh, to get the dictionary entry. Um, but then the remainder is conditional. Sometimes it will execute it, and sometimes it will compile it. And there's basically, so you can either, oh, and, and so execution basically means like you're interpreting it immediately as you're reading the word. Uh, compilation just means that you're going to compile a pointer to that word to whatever dictionary entry you're currently in the process of building. Um, so that's just how compilation works. So you can imagine if uh, so, so if you if you see this sort of in what's called immediate mode, which basically just means immediate mode means um, you know when I see a word, I'm going to execute it immediately, and that's what immediate mode means. Uh, then we do what we're doing here, which is, you know, you read the word, you execute it immediately. Uh, when you're in compilation mode, um, then, well, l l let me modify the statement in a sec, but in, 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 if you're in compilation mode, then instead of executing it, you're going to compile a pointer to the word that you would have executed to the current, to the end of the current dictionary entry. So, you're, so you can imagine if I was defining, suppose I wanted to define a word that does this, sort of a reusable word, rather than just having one occurrence of this sequence of, of actions, um, you could, you know, you could call it, like this is the conventional notation, you would use this notation here, and the colon basically means put, put the system, it, well, it, it first means read the next word, uh, just read it, not don't look it up in the dictionary, but just read it, um, which reads the string, right? Then it creates a new dictionary entry with that name, so it fills in, you know, the, right now we're using def entry uh, to hardwire in the at, at assembly time to har hardwire these entries, but it would fill it in at runtime um, when it when it's executing this colon, um, and then having done that, the um, there's going to be a, a, the so-called code pointer or the CP. It's going to point to the current end of the dictionary entry, which is going to initially be basically empty after the header that's been filled in by the colon with the name and the link and all this other standard stuff in the header. Um, and then at that point, it's going to put the interpreter into compilation mode. So previously it was in immediate mode, which meant that when it saw this, it immediately executed it and started compiling this new entry. Now, and then it puts the system into compilation mode, which means that when it reads this, now rather than executing one, 
it's uh, in pushing a one on the stack immediately, it's going to compile a pointer to the word one to the end of the dictionary, the current dictionary entry, which is the dictionary entry for stuff. Um, and so it's basically just going to concatenate the execution tokens for each of these words to the entry for stuff. And then when it gets to the semicolon, um, semicolon does, I guess it does three things, uh, but let's just talk about two of them. Uh, the first is it, com it, it adds a sort of, uh, it concatenates an implicit uh, exit to the end of, you know, because here we, we could have written exit explicitly, just like at the end of a C function that returns void, you can re you can just have a return statement that sort of does nothing because it always implicitly returns when it falls off the end of a function definition in C. But a semicolon basically concatenates this implicit exit to make sure that the thing actually exit when it hits the end of the definition. And it goes back into immediate mode. So it was in compilation mode, which meant that it was appending the, the pointers to all these different things, the current definition. Um, and then it sees the semicolon, it uh, concatenates the exit to the end, and it goes back into immediate mode. So it's no longer in compilation mode. So at this point, if you have one one plus, uh, it's not going to compile you know pointers to those words to the current dictionary entry, but it's going to execute them immediately as it was as it was doing before. So if you had one one plus, you know this would be immediate. It sees the colon, it goes into compilation mode. These now are compiled rather than executed. When it sees the semicolon, it goes back into immediate mode. Now these are executed as they're seen again. So that's kind of the idea behind um, immediate mode versus compilation mode. Um, the additional thing which is really important is that even in compilation mode, there are certain words which are tagged in the dictionary entry to be so-called immediate words. And immediate words um, are words that regardless of the mode you're in, you always execute them when you see them. Um, and um, do we have an example here? So this is this is used for stuff like that. You can think of them kind of like macros. I'll, I'll show them in detail in a sec. But they're kind of like macros in the sense that at compile time, they're executed immediately, even when other stuff is being compiled. So you can use these to, um, this is how in fourth, a lot of higher level control flow constructs are defined. Um, so there's some very low level control flow stuff that you would never want to use manually. Um, and then using these immediate words, which are just words that have been tagged as immediate, um, you can kind of use them as, as kind of like macros. If you know how to list macros, it's kind of a similar idea. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to implement this right now, all these concepts we just talked about, but I just wanted to give a little bit of a preliminary to connect with what we had last time. Um, so um, in order to support uh, these concepts, Let's first start with um, the idea of a global mode. Um, so that's a global variable. And um, I'm trying to think of if I want to. Yeah, OK, let's just do that. Um, First, let me show you a way you can define variables in, um, let me show you a way you can define variables in fourth. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's not really a crazy concept, but um, the idea is that to, to have, to work with variables, we're going to define words that when executed, push the, push an address on the stack of, of the location that's associated with that variable. Um, and so for example, right now, we have um, we have a variable. You know, we've allocated space uh, at assembly time for this variable called latest, and we initialize it from the latest constant uh, from the static initialization. Um, if we want to define a word um, that pushes, um, yeah, we're just going to call it push latest, just to disambiguate it with the other things that are called something related to latest, but it's going to be called latest. And really all it's going to do is it's going to push, um, it's going to push the address of the latest variable, which is called, which is called latest. Um, and so I'm just going to basically do this and then we have to exit when we're done as always. 
Um, and so that's kind of a way of defining variables. And you can automate some of the, this is just because we're hardwiring things in the assembler for now. But um, anyway, so this is kind of one way of, of doing that stuff. Um, so where were we, right? Like I was talking about the mode. So um, let's say we have a mode here and I'm just going to make it a full, um, Actually, let's just call it immediate. Um, and so it's going to be one if it's an immediate mode, and it's going to be in that by default, so that when you boot up the system, it's going to and it's execute things immediately. Uh, and if it's zero, it's going to be in compilation mode. Um, or maybe, actually, let's just call it mode. This is called mode. Um, and the idea now is that um, actually, I guess there's some more preliminary stuff we need to take care of first. So let me maybe do that. Um, Um, okay, let's take care of that. Um, and I think I'm going to, um, just because I, I'm seeing that all these different underscore variants of names are getting confusing. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to introduce a convention that all constants are, you know, just like in C are all uppercase. Um, Control Alt Enter. Um, um so we reassign that thing here and then the actual thing called latest let's just right so the, the variable is called latest um right so the reason i wanted to do this is that i want to have a variable called here or actually let me call it cp or maybe yeah let's call it here um here is going to basically point to the frontier. Oh, and, and, and this thing didn't get. Um, let me call this latest underscore latest now. All right. Um, let me call this CP. Um, and so basically, what this is going to do is that in this section, which is kind of the dictionary section, um, it's going to, you know, uh, dollar sign means you know the current address where you're assembling to and so I'm assigning this to a constant and then I'm going to um, initialize a variable with that constant just like with latest so this is just in order to support the static initialization uh, stuff that we're doing at assembly time um, all right so um, given that we have this we should also have I'm going to call it CP as well. We should also have one of these guys that um, uh, push the address of latest. Um, I'm just yeah, I'm trying to think of what I need in order to sort of bootstrap some of these things. Like I, I, I can write a bunch of stuff in assembly like I have been, but I kind of want to start moving more things into forth. And that will probably be, re you know, move back and forth as I... Uh, figure out where I want to put the boundary between hard-coded and, and kind of bootstrap stuff. Um, right, so CP, so this is where you're appending to. Um, okay. Okay. 
okay, okay, okay. So right now we have um, right now we have we have code for looking things up, but we don't have code for um, we don't have code for creating new entries dynamically, right? Like right now we were using this. Um, Right now we were using this def entry in order to fill in the fields, um, but we want to be able to do this at compile at runtime as well when we're compiling stuff, right? So we want to basically have a dynamic version of this kind of code. Um, and since that doesn't require control flow, I think I'm going to do it with uh, actual fourth code, but kind of hand compiled ahead of time. So what, what I mean by that is, um, Let's see. Um, yeah, let's do that. So first off, um, so CP is the pointer to the frontier. And so in order to get the pointer value, you have to actually do a fetch from it. Here is a conventional fourth word that actually reads from that value for you. And so um, really what it does is it, uh, it calls CP and then it loads it. Um, and so it loads that value. Um, and so this just, you know, reads the value, the current value of CP when you call it. Um, the uh, the other thing that's conventional is a word called a lot. And a lot is basically like, you know, you're used to doing this in C all the time, right? Like you do something like this. Uh, so you can think of here being this pointer, and it actually is CP, right? So it'd be consistent with the names because uh, here is the value of that rather than, you know. Anyway, so you're, you're used to doing this kind of thing when you're appending to buffers, you're kind of uh, incrementally building buffers and appending and advancing using this post increment type of thing. Uh, a lot is basically, you know, just doing this. It's just doing the part of, you know, advancing this uh, code pointer by some specified amount that it gets from the top of the stack. So, uh, Um, again, let's see how much of this is going to be bootstrapped from kind of string, like fourth, uh, fourth code defined in the string versus hand compiled code like this, but um, let's just do it hand compiled for now. Um, so it's going to uh, you put the stack effect in the comment. Um, it's going to take this on top of the stack. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to um, get the current value of here. Um, it's going to add whatever you know here is to the top of the stack. So this is going to be the top of the stack is now going to be here plus n, uh, and then we want to write that back to CP. And um, and so we're going to push the value of CP, and then we're going to do a store. Um, and if this was fourth code, you would this would be written as, um, you know, here. Uh, let's see, here plus CP, like that. Um, that's how short it would be if there was a fourth definition. And so, here we don't have colon defined yet, uh, because we're going to use a lot in order to define it. Um, but if you're using, you know, the fourth compiler rather than hand compiling it with using the assembler as a, as a crutch. This is how you would define it. And you can see the correspondence is very clear. Um, it's just the sequence of words as you know, you're pointing to them directly rather than going through a string parser and a dictionary lookup and stuff, but basically the same deal. Um, so we have CP here and a lot. Um, oh, another thing I forgot is that, um, and I believe we'll need this, um, uh, so this is for loading, loading and storing words. Um, you want to have versions of these that are for storing bytes. And really the only difference is that, um, Oh, sorry. 
this is going to be load. This is going to be zero, and this is going to. We want that. Uh, this is going to be B. Uh, these are going to be. These are conventionally called C for character, uh, C at, and C bang or C fetch. Uh, you know, load load character, store character. Um, and we'll need these because some of the header words are um, byte oriented rather than word oriented, like the the length. Um, all right. Okay, where were we? So I think we're now at the point. Um, and actually, let me write it sort of in fourth code, and then we'll just translate the definition to to this stuff afterwards. So we want to. Um, It's normally called create. Yeah, it's called create. Uh, so you want to create a word called create. Create a word called create. You want to define a word called create, and it's going to um, read the next the next word in the input buffer. And um, and so at this point you have this on the stack. Um, and then you want to create a new dictionary entry. Um, by the way, I think there's and maybe this is what we should be defining as the primitive. Um, but anyway, let's just do it like this. So these are on top of the stack, and we now want to fill in. Uh, let me just show you the format. We basically want to fill in this sort of thing, but dynamically. So I'm just I'm just going to paste this here, so we can kind of reference the offsets. Um, so the very first field we want to fill in is the code field, and this has to point to latest. So we already have a word we just defined called latest. Um, and this is a pointer, so we, we have to do this in order to read the value. But um, so let's let's push uh, let's push that on the stack, um, and then we want to. Oh, I remember the other helper word. Actually, let me just define. Uh, you know what? Let me. Um, even though we're going to be hand compiling them, let, let's define them in fourth code, sort of conventionally, even though we don't have a fourth compiler quite yet. Um, which I think is useful to see what's going on without some of the clutter, but there's not much of a difference. Like here, for example, is going to be like this, and a lot is going to be here plus CP. No, it's going to be like that. Um, so here's another helper word, which is very common. It's co called comma, and really all it does is it takes the thing on top of the stack. Um, And I'm just going to put in these stack effects. Um, which are just comments, um, but they're 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 kind of they're commenting the stack the top of the stack before and after the word uh, executes. So comma is um, it essentially is like I, I was mentioning before how this kind of thing is very common. That's basically what comma is. It's a word oriented thing that takes the thing on top of the stack, um, and um, stores it to the current code pointer. So basically, it first stores it to the code pointer. Um, no, not to the code pointer. It stores it to here, because that's the where things point to. Um, and, um, and then once we've done that, you want to, let's see. Once you've written that to the current, Value you have to do the increment, and you have to increment by four, right? Because it's a word you, you appended a word, um, and so you get here and you add four, and then you uh, store it back to CP. Actually, I guess the way to do it is just to use a lot since we already used a lot. So then you just say, yeah, you do that, and then you say uh, a lot four. Um, and here I'm going to start using, I guess, what is sort of a fourth convention which is that you double space or use some other extra spacing or indentation in order to divide words into phrases. Like these have no, uh, these, these have no real meaning other than to the, the programmer. Um, but I'm thinking of this as a single word, you know, that writes the current top value on the stack to here. Um, and I'm thinking of this as a single uh, phrase that, um, you know, that, that bumps the, uh, the CP by four bytes. Um, and you also want a um, uh, 
you, you, you also want a, uh, you know, a byte oriented version of this. The only difference is you have to use uh, the byte store and you have to only allot one, uh, one byte for that. Um, And uh, let's see, so uh, those are the helper words, right? So let's get back to um, creating this dictionary entry. So we, we read the word and which pushes uh, the length and, and address of the string we just read on the stack. And uh, then we, f we first want to fill in the link field. And, um, and so in order to do that, you know, you can basically just do this. Uh, well, I, I guess actually, let me, you have to be a little bit careful because we want to, you know, we want to, uh, we certainly want to put in this pointer, but then we also want to link in, um, you know, we want this word we're creating to become the new latest word after we've filled this in. So, um, I mean, there's different ways you could do that. Like, for example, um, you could record the address here. So now you have this. Um, and I'm, I'm, I was using, I'm, I'm kind of getting used to fourth a little bit over the last few days. So I don't use as many of these stack comments as I used to. It's easy to keep for me to keep it in my head now for the most part, but I'm going to use it here because I'm assuming people are not used to fourth. So uh, we record the address here, which is going to be, you know, the start of the, the header entry we're creating. Um, and then this is going to write the link field because we read the latest, oh no, we have to read from it. Uh, and then we write that. Uh, and then having written it, um, you update the old latest to point to, uh, uh, um, so after executing this, um, We're back to this state here, and then we write here, which is on the top of the stack from, from back here. We write that to latest, so now latest is updated. So this corresponds to this thing here. So when we wrote here, this is basically serving the same role as this label in that we're recording the location so that we can refer to it after we've advanced the cursor. Um, and then we have to write the name length. And the name length at this point is going to be on top of the stack because here has been consumed by the store from previous line. Um, but we want we have to duplicate it because we need the in, in order to do the byte copy uh, to fill this in we need to preserve the length so I'm going to duplicate the length and then write it and I have to write it as a uh, as a byte because it's a one byte field um, and so uh, after doing this we now have to do basically a mem copy uh, and I'm going to defer the definition of the mem copy for a sec, uh, but for now, assume that um, this is what it's conventionally called. Uh, it's, assume it's called um, it's called C move, and um, you know this is the stack precondition, source pointer, destination pointer, and length in this order on the stack. And so if you um, if you think about where we are at this point. Um, the length is on top of the stack, um, and we want to push the destination. The source is on, like the source and length are in the right order, but we want to get the destination in there as well. So that's here. So we push here, um, and uh, you know, basically, I mean, uh, let me maybe call it like this, just to keep things clear. There's two addresses here. It's going to look like this basically, which is not the right order, and so I'm going to uh, swap. Um, in order to get these into the right order. Uh, and then I'm going to do a C move. I guess maybe we'll do it like this. No, th I think this is the right phrasing because you want to look at this as a single operation. Um, um, so this is the name field. So, you know, the swap is just putting the arguments in the right order, and C move is like the, uh, is a mem copy, uh, basically. Um, C stands for characters before, right? That's a byte oriented move. So len is in bytes, and everything is in, everything is byte oriented. Um, 
is that the right thing? So here, dust pointer, and then swap it, and then see move. That looks right to me. Um, and I think that's it, actually, um, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, what didn't we define yet? We defined all of these, uh, but we don't have, I guess we don't have swap even, which is very basic. So let me just, I mean, we'll define these as we need them. It's the easiest way to do it, I guess. Um, I like to always read them in this order, actually. So we really just have to write these back swapped. Um, the the bigger one, which you haven't defined, is C move, and. Um, This requires looping clearly. Um, I can define it. I can totally define it in assembly, but I want to start kind of showing you how to do things in fourth. And so I'm going to write as, as if we had a facility we don't yet have, and then I'm going to sort of, I guess, macro expand it by hand, and, and so we can hand assemble it. Um, excuse me. So um, basically, what we have here is. Um, there's totally different ways you could do it. Uh, let's do it the very simple way, um, because these two words don't require much. I think that's what they're called. Um, and I'll explain what these do. These are actually examples of those immediate words I mentioned that act kind of like macros. Um, so you should think of this as just being an infinite loop, basically, uh, where this marks the beginning of the loop and this marks the, the, the loop back point. Um, and so what we're going to do is, you know, we have the length on top of the stack, um, and we're going to uh, we're going to check whether the length is zero. Um, and so I haven't explained how if works. That's also a um, an immediate word, but I'm, again, I'm going to kind of macro expand it to something that we can directly hand assemble in a sec. So um, I guess it's normally called minus if if we want the negative not if, not if version. So the reason we do the dupe is that we want to see if the length is non-zero, but we want to, you know, the, the like basically these three variables are going to be uh, present in some version throughout the loop. And so there always needs to be three elements in that order on the stack. And so we need to also make sure that when we finish the loop, uh, like when we loop back, that those are there in the right order. So we have to duplicate lengths so it, it's preserved. Anyway, so if, if length is zero, then we're just going to exit. Um, in fourth, the way you then is not, this is one thing that's confusing if you're used to like Algol style stuff, but then marks the end of the if. So when this executes, you want the loop condition to be on top of the stack. Then it executes everything after here up to then um, if the condition is true, or in this case, because it's minus if, if it's false. Uh, we could also do like this maybe to make it more clear. Or actually, I could, yeah. Maybe let me do this just to make it very explicit. So if this is zero, then exit. This means we're done. Otherwise, we discontinue. And so at this point, we have len on top of the stack, and uh, we want to do, you know, we want to do the equivalent of something like this in C. Um, you know, that's the moral equivalent of what we want to do, but we have to break it. It's for it's stack oriented. We have to approach it a little bit differently. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this. Um, temporarily to the bottom of the stack um, because you know basically what we're going to do is um, and I should do the conjugation now so um, I'm going to unrotate it's minus rope not rope so I'm going to unrotate when I'm done with this section of code that I've yet to fill in which will rotate length to the top of the stack because remember the arguments have to be in the original order when we loop back uh, and then I'm going to do minus one which is going to decrement um, and uh, you know Um, minus one is just a shorthand, a very convenient one that this, it does this. It doesn't do much. Um, but yeah. Um, 
And so at this point, like just to make it very clear, things are back in their right order. Uh, normally I wouldn't have these many stack comments, but um, probably not a bad idea to show you guys. Um, so anyway, so at this point we have the destination and this on top of the stack. Um, and again, we, we have to preserve them. So we're going to do two dupe, which is, um, this is the shorthand for doing two duplication. So we're duplicating the top two elements on the stack. And um, maybe the order is not the best for simplifying the stack manipulation. That's fine though, let's just do it. So we have the destination pointer on top. Um, and let me, uh, let me swap the elements so that um, on top of the stack is source. And then below that is uh, dust, and then I'm going to I'm going to read from source, which is going to consume source, uh, and then I want to write that to wherever destination points. Now things are in the right or wrong order, so you have to do this. Um, I think that's right. So here dust and source. So we swap, we read from source. And we swap back. Now source has been replaced by the contents of source at that location. And then we write to dust. I think that's right. Um, so that's basically, I think, how CMove would be implemented. Um, I think we already have, I'm trying to remember if we implemented equal to zero, or is it not equal to zero? I can't remember what we called it. Okay, we called it that. I mean, obviously this kind of thing, we can also just do it by negating one another, but um, whatever. Let's just put it in. Um, okay, so let's see, are there any, aside from the immediate words, which I'm going to fill in in a sec, are there any other things we have not um, defined? And I mean, yeah, like you, you could also, I guess we, we should fill in not, um, excuse me. Actually, I guess this is kind of like logical not, so we shouldn't do that now that I think about it. Because you are logically zero if, yeah. So let's just make that a built-in. Um, okay, we have to do road as well. And road could be implemented in terms of, no, I guess it can't be implemented in terms of, 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 of swap. So uh, let's do that road. So um, road is, um, Rote is a cyclic permutation um, that goes like this. So you're basically, you're taking these three elements and you're rotating them so that uh, but one spot to the right, as you can see, and so C wraps around. And um, so we have here three elements we have to load. And um, let's see. T1, or no, sorry, T3 goes to the T1 spot. Um, T1 goes to the T2 spot. T2 goes to the T3 spot. This is the signal permutation. Um, and then there is the, the inverse, which rotates left. Um, it's called n rote. And it goes uh, y c x. So it rotates one spot to the left. And so let's see here the bottom is t2. This is t1. And this is t3. Um, 
is that it in terms of the non-immediate words? Equals zero if exit wrote to dupe we defined swap we have c fetch we have swap yeah i think these are all here now um all right let me uh, show you what these immediate words do um in this case it's quite simple um i, I won't show you how they're implemented for for now i'll do it today but um for now, I just want to sort of show you at a low level what this expands to once the once the fourth compiler has flattened all the immediate words and just generated the dictionary entries. Essentially, you should think of there being a loop, uh, like a loop label up here, and I'm just going to write this as a comment just to signify that um, that's here. And this thing here is going to basically generate a jump, an unconditional jump, uh, back to a uh, loop. And so that's the idea. And so we have a low level instruction, which you're basically never going to use manually. Um, and it, it takes an immediate operand in the, uh, in the definition itself, following it, um, which is a target address. And actually we already have that. So I, I don't need to talk about it <laughs> as if it's some mysterious thing. So this is the first part of it. This is the unconditional jump. And you can see it uses the return stack to do its magic. Uh, reads from the top of the return stack, um, loads the value, so this is the immediate operand, and then puts that back to the return stack. So it's not going to return to where it came from, it's going to return to wherever the target says. Um, so that's the unconditional backward jump. Um, and that's actually all you need for begin and again, because this is just really an unconditional loop, an infinite loop, uh, which, you know, is it, it, terminated here, but it's not, uh, the basic loop structure itself is, is unconditional. Um, and so the, the main thing we have to do, if, if we're hand compiling this in the assembler, really all we have to do is use an assembly label to record this location. Uh, like, you know, we were doing that already, I think, right? Like we were already doing, we're basically doing this kind of thing. Um, the fourth compiler will need to do that itself uh, without the aid of the assembler, you know, at runtime, but um, that's the basic idea. If is a little bit more complicated, but uh, not by a whole lot. The way if works is, and I'm going to break it onto a separate line just so we can maybe write some comments, but basically what it's going to do is, um, actually let me, let me just do this. Um, the, what, what if is going to do is it's going to, I can't, I think it's called branch. Um, so branch, so jump is the unconditional thing. Branch is the conditional thing. And so um, branch is going to conditionally branch. So it, as before, um, it has a, a target to go to if the branch is taken. Um, but the difference is it's conditional. So it's going to take whatever is on top of the stack and treat it as a logical value. You know, whether it's zero or non-zero is going to determine whether to take the branch. Um, and so then the exit is here. So um, Check whether it's zero. If it's not zero, and so I guess I should mention it should be minus branch because we want to invert the notion of what is true, which you, you know, can implement that various ways. But anyway, let's just say that's minus branch. And then you want to go here. So that's C move. Um, and that's more or less what all of this immediate word stuff expands to. But um, since we're bootstrapping, we, you know, I, I expanded this by hand so that you can see how it works. Um, we already have jump from previously for doing our infinite loop at the top level. Um, although, I mean, you, you can, uh, I guess I should mention that jump can actually be defined as a primitive given that we have, here's how you define jump. Um, I mean, this is why fourth is beautiful. This is literally the definition of jump. Um, And you can see it here. So, but you could you can define this yourself, basically. Um, which is amazing. But anyway, um, and actually, yeah, let me do that. Let me define branch like that. Um, so, how do you define branch?
Oh, sorry. Someone said I didn't do the right dupe. Yeah, I, I, sorry. I should do uh, over dupe for two dupe. Good catch. Yeah. Thank you for that catch. So, so over, and we also haven't defined over, so let me define that too. Over is like dupe, but it doesn't duplicate the topmost element. It duplicates the second topmost element. So, um, so it does this. Consistent. I kind of like writing it like this. So we always. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it like that. Um, so you bump the pointer and you, know, you write that. So yeah, to dupe. So just to show what this looks like, sort of incrementally. Um, you start with you start with x y, um, and then you have this. Oh no, that's not right. This should be over again. So, so Fabian's saying I should write a tool to, um, what do you call it, to, to, to transcribe these into assembly. I mean, this is not going to be very difficult. I'm, this is basically all I need. Like, it's very little more that I, that I need beyond this. Um, so, and once I have it, yeah. So, it, it, this is, I mean, like, I don't know. This is not very hard to to to, to transcribe. And anyway. I'm not worried about that because this is almost all we need for the bootstrapping. Um, where were we? Right. So I, I, I this was the wrong definition of to do. It's over over because this is the first one and then the second one. Yeah. So it's like this. So it's over over. Um, okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. Where are we? Okay. Now I got what was what was I defining? Oh, I was defining branch. Someone was saying the to do was wrong, which is correct. Uh, so that should be for right now. Okay. The way branch works is um, basically there's two possibilities, right? It can either be um, so as before. This one's going to be a little more complex. I'm going to spread it across multiple lines. We, uh, we take the top of the return stack, which is going to point to the immediate operand that is the branch target. And so um, I think we need two copies of that because on the one hand, we want to compute that plus four, which is going uh, plus, plus four, which is going to uh, point to, you know, the sequentially next instruction after the immediate. So this is going to be the not taken uh, target. Um, and then the other one is going to, um, is going to be the taken target, where we have to dereference uh, the immediate operand just like we did here. And the dupe is because we're using it in two different ways. We're either incrementing it, you know, by four, or we're reading from it. Um, and uh, at this point, you basically have um, flag, false target, true target. Um, and let's see here. Um, I think I'm going to write a function called mux, which is going to be, you know, a, I guess you can call it like a branchless, a branchless select mux, a multiplex. So, um, it's going to, and I guess we want to do minus rote mux. Um, so, because I think the natural uh, definition of mux is basically, uh,
you know, something like this. I'm just, I'm not, I'm just gonna have the definite, uh, the, the signature for now, but um, this is basically what we want. So this is not a control flow branch. This is sort of a data branch we're selecting between two cases. And so here we're selecting between two cases and um, the minus road is in order to get things into the right order for the, um, for the mux. And then having gotten that, you uh, write this back to the top of the return stack so that when you return, that's where you go. Um, something like this. <clears throat> so in order to In order to write this, we are, I guess we, 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 we're not going to assume that, that this is either zero or one. So we have to make it zero or one by using, uh, you know, this, which converts it to that kind of value. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert it to a zero or one value. Um, then we're going to negate it in order to turn it into a all ones or all zeros bit flag, bit mask. Um, and I guess we then have to duplicate it because we have to use it twice. Um, um, and so basically the definition I want to implement is going to be like, um, I mean, if this was C, I would write it like this. So, so let me just not do that, but it would be um, something like this. I mean, you could use plus as well, actually. That would be fine. Um, well, let me make sure the, the, so if this is one, this should be all one, so that's correct. I think this is it. Um, so I'm going to kind of write it like this, mask. Um, and so, in order to rotate everything, actually, I think this is better. Let me, let me just have one value and maybe, um, uh, boop, boop, boop. let's do a, a rote. Uh, if you do the rotation, then it's mask Y. Then you do the over, and you get it like this. Or maybe this is, well, let me try this and see where it goes, and then we'll, I think there's probably a better definition in terms that has less stack manipulation. But um, you want to do this, and then you do and. Um, no, this is fine. You do this, you do and then you wrote, and you do and, and then you or. Because after you and, well, let me write it out just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, oh, and I have to negate it as well. Um, so this should be not and. Um, and then you wrote. Then you and and then you or okay. Something like this. Let's see here. Oh, so Fabian has a I don't know if that definition is simpler um because of the stack manipulations that kind of funk everything up in uh L let me try this uh, i mean I, I i see what you're saying there um l let me try this and uh not that this is very good either let's see here Um, let me try moving some of these definitions over. Uh, so, so 
just to show, I guess, how simple it is, if the, the translation goes. Uh, so comma is here, uh, here store for a lot, um, exit. So let me also define four here. I don't want to do a number of parser right away. Um, so this is comma, um, C comma is, maybe let's just call it, yeah, let's call it. Actually, instead of calling it load B, let's call them C load. Um, so this is C comma, and this is C store, one, a lot, exit. Um, And actually, this doesn't deserve to be bootstrapped. I can just write out the one minus. Um, or this doesn't deserve to be hard coded. To dupe. And then let's just. Um, the one I want to test is this one. A little bit complicated. Um, and again, I mean, mostly using this as an excuse to maybe show how to write stuff and forth. So uh, this probably, I mean, you, you probably would want to implement this in assembly and a lot of these things actually. But uh, for the sake of example, so um, so let's see, uh, not zero sub. We don't even have sub right now, so we should define that. Um, Uh, see sub and wrote over not not here is equal to zero not zero or no is zero rather um Don't have and either, do have wrote and or. Well, we can, I mean, we, we could do this with add instead of uh, or, but we need it for anyway. So we're, we don't need it, but we should expose it. So let's just do that. Um, All right, um, I'm going to test this before I start putting in C move, which is uh, the bigger kahuna, or, any, or even branch, actually, because it's harder to debug that stuff. But here, I, it's just control flows, or data flow, so I should be able to test it with some different cases. Um, OK, so as our test case, let's say um, we select between 1 and 4 based on 0. Uh, and then we put digit. I'm sure there's a, oops. Where did my terminal go? Oh, I, 
I thought I ran it. Um, wait, did that just exit by itself? I guess it must be one of these. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, <laughs> exit. Okay. So how many times do we have to press enter? Push the one four zero mux put digit okay that looped infinitely probably because it dropped off the end um let's try this so this should be zero okay i'm sure the stack effect is screwed up somehow um, let's see. I mean, let's see if the, oh, I mean, this is definitely not, this should be negate. Um, swap. Um, yeah, yeah. This should, let's see. It's definitely one of the bugs. Let me go fix that in the definition. Um, Let's make sure that works. Sorry, I'm just going into paranoia mode. I don't want to single step that thing right now. So it's not printing anything. I mean, th that could mean. Oh, it's because it's zero. Maybe? No, that's not it. So I'm not pushing anything on the stack. This is doing zero. Then when I do mux, it's not working. That's surprising. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. This is for um, assembly defined words. So that's why. Just try that first. Okay, so that's zero. Um, and if I do this, it should be minus one. Actually, it won't be minus one because I don't have a, yeah. So let's say that's minus one. Uh, well. Uh, 
Um, and I should get the same if it's four. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so then let's select between these two values. Just go back and look at my code anymore. Um, so this is mask. Then wrote. Oh no, it's a uh, y mask x. Then mask well, I guess let's see if the first thing is the true one I guess this is actually the logic which which we intended at least the way we're using it here but the second argument is the true argument so that should be should be not. Um, so negate the mask bitwise. No, we don't even have that. We're using. Oh, I see. We're not negating the bit mask. Um, It's built in. Well, let's do this and then. Create the mask bitwise, hand it, rotate over, hand it, put them together, exit. Well, we got something, but it doesn't seem to be the right thing. Am I using put digit or put char? Oh, so that should be the right thing. Um, Let's see. Not the mask. Hand it together. Rotate that over. And the new two top elements. And then or. Not and. Wrote. And. Or. Exit. Looks semi reasonable. All right. I should really put in better debugging functionality, but I don't. <laughs> Uh, to, to even print numbers generally, I need to put in divides. I mean, that's probably about time, but they're not in the RV32 
I base set, so I've been kind of trying to avoid them, but I, I'll need them anyway in a bit, so maybe I should just put them in and ease the debugging so I can easily do top of stack printing. Um, let's see. Not equal to zero consumes the mask. Bitwise negates the mask. Rotate it over. Need to do some computations of the basics. Oh, the knot is no, that that isn't right. Isn't it? Sorry. Well, it should be XOR, but we're not using that right now. Let's break it down a little bit more. I'll just make sure I'm not doing something stupid with this one. Oh, no, that's right. Hmm. You know what? Um, let me just do a debug word. What, what registers am I not using? Um, let's say 13 and up. Should have done this a long time ago. Um, does I have an easy way to visualize these?
I guess that's not really true. Um, you know, I would have to set a, a, a debug breakpoint to that. Uh, I'm trying to remember what state my stupid breakpoint debugging thing is in. This is a little bit, uh, I'm guessing that callback was not set. See if this even works. Okay, I screwed out of something. Um, oh, forgot to recompile. Something else that miscompiled. What in the world? Sorry, just find some stuff that broke. What in the world? You went something, something, something. Sorry, this is not really what I was planning on showing off and I don't even think I screwed with a compiler recently. This looks like some kind of memory corruption bug.
Um, okay, maybe, God, I mean, I kind of want, <laughs> want to get this working. Why am I running into that kind of stupid bug in the middle of things? I swear that's... Wait, what? That's so insane. I mean, I guess this must be like, I must have had the text buffer open and it just did some crazy shit. All right. It wasn't a memory corruption bug. It was just some kind of fat fingered. God knows how that happened. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Um. So it's one four four. Let me just see. Pop the stack, no pun intended, and see what the heck I was doing here. All right, so that looks kind of reasonable so far. I mean, we haven't done anything interesting yet. Um, I see, and now it thinks the result is minus two, and so that's why it was. Um, let me just get a drink. Where was I? Um, minus two. So yeah, let me um, let me show you a trick, I suppose. Um, We can actually, I mean, we, we do have the string interpreter, so we can actually do this. Um, we can we can just concatenate. It's one of the nice things about fourth, right, is that you can just concatenate and split strings uh, when you're refactoring stuff. And so anyway, let's just write this out. Should just be able to copy this over if I named everything correctly. Oh, wait, I should set the breakpoint first. Okay. So we'll push one on the stack. 
push bar on the stack. Uh, you just follow along here. One four one, um, and then we do the one is on top of the stack. Oops, and then oh yeah, I should be really careful about that. Actually, when you're in the nested mode, if you continue running. Uh, Probably put in some code for that if you want to screw that right now. Okay. So, right. Uh, one for one is on the stack. Oh, so even that didn't work. And that was oh, because right now we're not checking for <laughs> this is why the assembler is actually better because we're not checking for non-existent entries. Uh, so that was actually the issue before. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, that should still be one because one is not equal to zero. And where were we? Um, okay, let me scroll it off the screen again like an idiot. Um, so then it should negate it. So it's minus one. It's still correct. Then it should rotate it. That was not a correct rotation, so that's probably the issue. That just really swapped. Okay, so that's just clearly my rotation is bogus. Actually, is the first rotation end rote? Yeah. Maybe this is the issue. Yeah, it should be like this. My bad. That could just be the entire issue right there. Um, Minus one. Okay, that was actually a rotation. Um, right, and now we did the thing. Let's see where we are in the grand scheme of things. Um, did the over. I guess we just did the the bitwise knot. So it's now zero, went from minus one to zero. So we now do the and, which is correct. And we now do the rotation in the other direction, which is also correct. And we do, okay. Okay, <laughs> so it works now. It was just that stupid negative rotation that was implemented incorrectly. Um, let me keep this here just in case I need to step through it again now. I'm going to keep going with this stream because I'm so angry I got caught up on that stupid thing. So, um, okay, it printed four. Yay, it printed four. And we should verify that if the mask, if, if the logical value is four, then we also get four. 
uh, and if it's zero, then we get one. And it does. Okay, so that was literally just that issue. All right. Um, now let's do branch. This is what we came for. Do, 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 do. Um, from R dupe for add load and wrote mux to R exit. And let, let me just make sure the sense of the branching here is correct. Otherwise, we just have to change these two arguments. So that's fine. Um, so let's do a small program. Um, I'm just going to over. I'm going to keep this here, and. Uh, uh, just to do another stub thing here. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have an alternating. Yeah, let's do that. Let's alternate printing four and, uh, four and zero or something, but let's do it in a weird way. Um, no. Yeah, let's do like a, a, a toggling flag basically. So we have a value on top of the stack, um, and let's say it's initially zero, um, and then we have a label here, and um, I guess we need another label to, to jump over. And so I'm going to say if this is zero, uh, if it's zero, then we go to label two. Or rather, if it's true, I suppose. Um, and so this is just going to negate. No. And push one. So if it's one, it goes down here. Otherwise, it's zero, it goes there. Um, I guess this is really like if. Um, Jump one. So let's see here. So let's see, we always, each time through the loop, we do a put digit, and then we do a get digit drop because we just want to throttle the loop. So push what's currently in the stack, but from the loop, then check based on what's on top of the stack. Uh, if it's non-zero, we do this. Actually, that's a dumb way to do it. Let's do it like this. Um, we read a digit, and based on whether it's zero or one, we print something. So. Um, let's do it like this. See if that works. So get the digit and based on whether it's zero or non zero, or yeah, zero or non zero. If it's one, we do this and try to one, indicating true, and otherwise, like this. And 
in either case, we go back to the top. All right, let's see if that works. Um, all right. Actually, let me first always echo what you printed just to make sure the thing whole thing is live. So we echo what you printed, and then you do the conditional branch and print either a zero or one. Just to make sure the system is live. Okay, I think it's just probably the branch logic is busted. Um, does the branch at this point there should be one value on top of the stack which is being used as the branch condition and I'm saying go here if it's true otherwise go to the next thing after that which is plus four if it's less um, I mean one thing I could do just to make sure this infinite loop is working is do this okay so it's always printing zero um, Okay, so that part of it is working. Presumably this is working as well, and so it's just a matter of figuring out why branch is not doing the right thing. So let's see here. Um, so maybe let me, let me put the definition of jump next to branch. Let's see if we can kind of see them next to each other. So read from R, um, right, for the false case, which is what we're handling first, we're adding four. For the other case, we're loading. Um, then we have to, yeah, we have to end route in order to get the original flag to the top of the stack for mux. And then we mux between them, leaving one of the targets. And then we put that back. Um, Look here. At four, load the word from the other one. Rotate to move the flag to the top. And then finally, write that back to the return stack and exit. Must be doing something stupid here. So we have the operand here. have get digit dupe it we put it so it should still be on top of the stack at this point um, I mean I can always do this the old breakpoint.
Okay. Clearly the PC is being misdirected to God knows where. Let me try a quick variant, which um, to make sure that so this should unconditionally fall through and just skip that operand. So that is unconditionally falling through. And I mean, if I, this is already being done here, but if I did this, just to confirm that the branch offset is correct, if I did this, I'm getting unconditionally that. Um, If I just, I'm just going with this thing original here. So we have this one on the stack. So do for plus. Oh, I'm an idiot. Sorry. Um, this is not correct. I was doing this to the plus four. After doing this to the top element, so I, I should do dupe. Um, then I should swap because the thing I want to load is below that. Um, okay, this is me being an idiot. Okay, that works now. At long last. Um, so if I print one, if I, or if, if I enter any, the, the reason it's printing multiple characters is it's treating the new line as a character as well, and it's treating it as a non-zero. But if there's a zero, then it prints zero. So anyway, this is working. Um, so that was just a stupid stack manipulation bug, which if I had better debugging features in the fourth interpreter, I would have been able to spot immediately, I hope. But anyway. Um, all right, branch and jump. I think we have enough now. <laughs> Let's pop the stack way up to C move. Um, Wait, wait, yeah, if we, we I guess if we are non zero, then we skip. So it's like um, non-zero branch. Um, otherwise, exit. 
Um, and then eventually, I guess it was, let me see, there's two labels. So this is the port one, and then eventually uh, we want to go back to the top. Um, and then here, so let's see, we have length on top of the stack. Um, to dupe, swap, oh, I guess that is right. Um, swap, C load, swap. This should be C store as well, not plain. Um, and wrote minus one. Um, let's see here. Check if the length is non-zero, and if it is, then we continue. Otherwise, we exit. Um, and if we do continue, we rotate the length to the bottom of the the stack of three elements. We duplicate the top two. Um, we load from the source operand. Swap that back down and then store to the destination operand. Oh, but we have to, sorry, so this is actually not right. We have to, uh, after doing this, after doing this, we're back to the original configuration um, with source dest len. So you have to do swap one plus, swap one plus minus wrote one minus maybe I do it like that um, because we have to increment those pointers let's put that onto multiple lines um, Is by far the most complicated word we've done so far. Okay, I don't know why I'm decompiling it. I should just be able to rerun it. But um, let me think about a good test case for this. Well, I guess we can just try create directly, but this is um, uh, what are you saying is not quite right? Storing in the wrong location. Let me see. So dust, dust should be on top of the stack. And let, let, let me write some stack comments. So this is two dupe, and they're in the same order. And so swap source to the top. 
read from that location, swap it back. Um, now Dest is on top of the stack and the source value at the head is below it. And then you write to it. Uh, it should be like this, which I think we already fixed in the code. Yeah. Um, and then we increment these two things and decrement the count and continue the loop. Something like that. So why do you say the C stores to the wrong location? I mean, I, I'm not saying I disagree necessarily, but from what I can tell, this looks right. By the way, we should probably, like it seems like a useful word would be like, you know, like uh, basically, this. So let's factor this out. It's basically just this part here. I don't know what to call this. Um, maybe like that. To dupe, swap, load it, swap, C store. Um, swap. Oh yeah, it shouldn't be one, it should be, anyway, but let's just uh, push one, add, that's it. Oh no, sorry, that is right. Um, What are we doing here? To dupe, load it, um, and then increment these and exit. See, move one and wrote sub one. Jump. Okay, that's reasonably elegant. Not too complicated anyway. Um
by the way, I just wanted to, I guess, point something out. Um, this is sort of a mathy thing, but <clears throat> something you see all the time when you're doing stack stuff, as I realized, as I started, I mean, I, I have like close to zero experience actually writing fourth code until a few days ago. Like I have very limited previous experience of actual fourth programming as opposed to sort of some of the internals. Um, and one thing you notice very quickly is the idea of conjugation. So I just wanted, you can see it in two cases here. Conjugation is the idea of taking an operation and transforming it by doing a forward transform before it, doing the operation, and then doing the inverse, inverse transform after it. Um, so for example, if I want to do plus one on the, not the top element of the stack, but the one below it, I conjugate by swap. Swap is its own inverse, so it looks a little bit too symmetric. But imagine this was minus swap. Minus swap happens to be the same thing as swap. But this is really what you're doing. Um, and, or you can think of it like this. You inverse transform first and then forward transform after, same thing. Um, in the case of rote, it's the same sort of thing, but now you're doing it to the third element down, basically, or something like that. Um, but anyway, you kind of see this pattern all over the place, is my point. So that's the way to read this and how to come up with it. It's the same idea here as well, right? We're applying C at C fetch. We're applying C fetch to the second element down. So you should look at this as a single phrase. Swap C at swap is a single phrase. And then we apply this to the top. So that's kind of the way to tokenize it in your brain when you see these uh, combinations. Similar here. Rote, C move one minus rote. That's one phrase that applies it to the two elements. Like it applies C move one, not to the, it applies basically an operator to the two elements. Not, you know, not the top element, but the second and third element from the top, basically. Um, and yeah, Mutatsu is talking about uh, conjugation as commutators and Rubik's cubes. That's exactly right. The idea that you do a certain transform to put something into the right spot and then you undo it. Uh, and yeah, it's in group theory. It's also in like in linear algebra. Uh, this the idea is very important, and for some reason people call it similarity transforms in linear algebra. But uh, if you've done like graphics programming, you're familiar with this. Um, where, for example, this is, you know, this is a coordinate system transform. And maybe A transforms from maybe B is a transform that's expressed in object space, and A is a transform that goes from uh, object to global space. So you think of this as a transform, and you think of this as a of A as a change of basis. So you conjugate by A in order to, to changing basis, not for a vector, but for a transform. So this is really the idea. Um, rote itself is kind of like operating, if you think of it on points, but if you're conjugating by rote, you're operating on another tra operation. It's kind of a high order way of operating. Um, so yeah, that's a kind of recurring idea in math and programming and all kinds of stuff. All right. Um, let me just let me finish this off. Uh, aside from fat fingered or fat brain typos, I feel pretty good about this. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Um, and let's finally try to create an entry or uh, let's try to define the thing that creates entries. Um, so let's just see what this does. This, this is actually very simple because all we're doing now is concatenating stuff we've already written. There's really no control flow or anything. So word here. Um, latest 
um, yeah, I guess the word is called latest. So latest, we load it, and then we um, we concatenate it. Uh, and here we store it because at this point. Here it's on top of the stack, and so that's where we write to latest. Um, and then C comma to so what are we duplicating at this point? This is the length. So duplicating the length and writing that to the length field. There should also be an alignment. Um, which I'll do in a sec. Um, but yeah, after we do this, there should be alignment, four byte alignment, because this is a byte array, so it doesn't, you know, we already, I mean, again, that gets exactly analogous to what we're doing in def entry. Um, boom, boom, boom. That's it. We're doing exactly the same stuff here, we're just doing a dynamic late runtime. Um, so dupe C comma to write the length. Um, and then here swap C move to copy that and then align and exit. Um, so we haven't written align yet. Let me just you know write it in this notation. Um, so typically I think in fourth there's two. There's aligned which is sort of operates on a number so it returns the aligned value and then there's a line which is sort of an imperative thing that actually advances the here pointer you see the cp pointer so so this one is you know aligned x or something like that and um i think we've seen this by now is we x plus three um if we're writing it in algebraic notation like this um and so this is just add as a three add and something like that. Um, and then um, a line essentially you you um, I think you just do this. You align here and then write it back to CP, something like this. Um, and so, what did I write? There's actually no notation for this, so I have to do bitwise not. So this and not and, and, and exit. Um, and then I'm just going to continue doing these hard coded uh, literals, uh, word literals, until uh, we're bootstrapped more. I mean, we could use this the generic push thing, but. I want to be able to, I want to be able to basically copy and paste this code and kind of redefine it. Um, as, you know, string based code rather than using the assembler. In a tiny bit. So let's see, two, three, four. Um, so this is aligned. We can just, let's just test it. I mean, We've written a bunch of code without testing anything. Let's not test the more complicated stuff for now. Let's uh, just test the basic align thing. So yeah, this 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 was good. Um, so let's say uh, we get digit um, aligned. Put digit. 
go back to the top and see how that goes. A line reference, but never defined. All right, yeah, we might as well define it, even if we're not really able to test it this very second. So what did we say? Um, we take here, we align it. Um, and then we write that back to CP. Okay, so one gets rounded up to four, zero should be not rounded up. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so this looks good. Um, well, I mean, we could also, yeah, all right. get back to our string based interpreter um, boom, boom, boom. what was I thinking about all right create um, oh another thing that we don't do in create which I think we should do um, actually, let me just go to the bathroom for one sec. I have to pee real bad. I'll be right back. So one thing we haven't done here is we haven't set the CFA field, which is how I honestly can't remember if create normally does that for you or not. Um, let's just, I mean, we can put it in there for now, but basically um, where was my code for that? Um, but anyway, it would be, let's just hard code it, um, or do call, yeah, and let's, yeah, that's fine, actually. So all we have, to, we don't have to put that in, we can do that ourselves. Um, Uh, do call comma uh, this is just going to uh, push the literal do call and exit um, so line do call blah 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 so, moment of truth, maybe. Uh, 
me think. I guess we need the quote, which we already have some of. Yeah, let's keep going. I really. Um, there's an oper operator called quote, which um, reads the next word. So basically, the idea is we've already done it. It basically does this. You, you write something like, it's like taking the address of a function is more or less what it is. So normally when you have a word, the interpreter, you know, parses the word, finds it in the dictionary to find the, the code pointer, and then either executes through that or compiles it. But when you quote, all you do is you return on the stack that thing. So like it's basically this. Um, that's quote. Oh, and you write it like this with an actual quote. So you write, you know, if I want to compile a pointer to something, you would write this. So this is an immediate word, by the way, so-called immediate mode, but we're going to be executing it initially at top level where it's always immediate mode anyway. So if you do this, uh, this is going to start executing. It's going to read this as the next word from the, from the input stream. Um, you know, find the pointer to that thing. And then if you write this, it's going to concatenate it to the end of the current word you're, com you're compiling in the dictionary. So this is how you kind of emit code into when you're compiling by hand. Uh, so let me show you how that goes, assuming I didn't fuck up. Because now we should be able to do some interesting stuff like, um, I mean, I, and I probably fucked it up royally, so. Um, Okay, l l let me let me just show you what I mean here. Um, so this is going just to verify we didn't break shit in the meanwhile. So let's just make sure this still works. So this prints for. Um, let's create, so so, for, so far we only have literals that are hard-coded up to four. Let's create a literal for eight, which is just going to be two, two times four, right? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an entry called eight. So we're calling this word create we've called. Um, and I mean, assuming we didn't screw up, and there's luck that can screw up, so... Um, we might have a single step it, but let's try here. Um, it's going to create this entry. Um, under that name. Um, and then at this point you can, you can do something like this. Um, for dupe uh, plus exit. And what this means is, and again, you shouldn't get caught up on the fact that it's like an integer, like it's a numer numeral thing, because fourth doesn't care whether something is a numeral at this level. So this creates an entry in the dictionary called eight, a word called eight fills in the header and advances the cursor to point to, you know, the end of the entry where you can just start concatenating stuff. And so basically we concatenate an entry to four and, and dupe and plus and exit. So this is exactly the same as if we had, you know, done, or except done at runtime as if we had done, you know, um, four dupe, add exit basically but we're now doing it at runtime um, and at this point we should be able to say eight put digit because now it, it's in the dictionary and uh, and you know what let's make this a multi-line string so we can start formatting things a little more interesting way 
Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know why I'm rebuilding because I should just rerun. Um, Do we have show? Yeah, so let's put the show back in by setting a breakpoint. Um, break on this line. So 14, so, so wait, so where are we? I think yeah we left the stack in a bad state which is not always a bug you can so, so one weird thing about stack machines is that you can leave too many elements no that's not true actually this is only because we're at the top level so i definitely need to clean that up um but anyway we should still be able to actually get it to work uh, I'll do that in a sec. Um, so at this point, we've, let's see, we've executed the first word, which should be create. And you can see, if you look on top of the stack, this is some of the stuff that didn't get cleaned up. This thing here and this thing here are going to be like pointers to memory. This is clearly uninitialized memory or some random garbage that's not part of the stack. Um, So comma has executed and has compiled a pointer to four. And we can eyeball whether it's in the right point because for like show, um, show was like 1848. And you can see four was defined right before it. And so it's 17 something something. So, you know, I believe that that is the right copy there. Um, and then after that, it pops the stack because it consumes it for the append. And um, now there should be another token on the stack and that's higher in memory because it was one of the more primitive ones we defined earlier. And then that gets popped. And here's another one, which would be plus. That gets done. And now exit again. And now here comes the question of whether 8 has actually been installed as a dictionary entry. And it has. That's amazing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. How did that work? can't believe I was right on the first try, but there's definitely something with the stack having access elements there. Um, so, I mean, like, let, let's do an example. Get digit. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, we can we can have this one, um, but but let's create a uh, another word. Let's compile a function that does something useful. Like, um, actually, we have twice already. Did we No, we're not using twice for anything. So let's define twice ourselves now using create. So you can do it twice and uh, duplicate the top element, um, add it, then exit. And now we should be able to get digit twice, put digit. Okay, let me take out let me take out this stuff here um, 
because we already have the program itself is sort of throttling stuff now with get digit. Okay, clearly this is not working for whatever reason. Oh, because there's only one thing. Um, I mean, let's do a bunch. Okay, I think this is just running out of memory. Overwriting. Let's not do the get digit. Let's, uh, if I do this, let's put this back just so we can debug it if we need to. I'll just. Shit's not working. Um, let me try this again, just to make sure I'm not, I wasn't crazy. Okay, we do get eight. Um, Duplicate the top element on the stack. Add the top two elements on the stack, which is going to be two copies of the initial element, and then exit. If I do four twice, put digit. Does not work for some reason. There's not a, another definition of twice, is there? It's not because after the first entry, this doesn't work. This could be an issue, so let me just. Um, what could be going wrong? You know what, before we get to that, let's figure out why create is, is leaving things in a funny state on the stack, uh, which I was, you know, because things seem to work, I was kind of cavalier about it, but uh, definitely something that needs to be looked at. So this is after the first word has executed, which is create. Um, I would expect create to not have any net stack effect. Like it shouldn't take anything from the stack because it's reading the word, not from the stack, but from the terminal buffer or the input buffer. Um, and you can see here there's a, Well, I mean, actually, I, I guess I don't really know how big the stack is. That's something I should, um, I mean, I'm kind of assuming those elements are garbage, but um, that may not be a, let's see. So where's the stack? Um, let's put, let's put a bunch of stuff around the stack. Um,
Oh, interesting. Did I somehow manage to put the assembler into an infinite loop? I guess the problem is, yeah, 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 this is interesting. Um, I guess I don't really want to fill because fill affects, I mean, the way I could do it is I could say, And all these things should be zero initialized, though. Although, let me put some of this stuff here. Let's just go and look at this word to see what the stack effects are. Um, so here we have address length here. Because um, word gives you the address and the length. Then we push latest. We load from that. And we write it to the entry, which is the link. Um, and so after that, you know, this consumes here and it consumes latest. So then we're back to having uh, adder and len. And then we. Oh, no, sorry, that's not true. This thing only consumes latest, so we load from latest. But then when we're, you know, we're back to having this, and so we store here, which is the the start of the header. We store that to latest. So after that, um, we're back to address length. And uh, after this, so we we duplicate. The length and we write it out as a byte. I think I know what the bug is. The difference is between one single character and multi character names. That must be the bug because there's we're doing C moves and stuff like those could easily have bugs related to that. So let me check that out in a sec. Um, it's probably what it is. And actually, I know I know for a fact that's part of it. I, I can see the bug right now um, because when you it's a really stupid, stupid bug. So inside this loop, we always have these three things on the stack. Um, once we exit, we have to drop them. So I think that's the issue. Once we're done, we have to drop them. So we've been maintaining these three loop variables, but once we're done, we have to drop them. And so we're going to define C, a three drop, which is just drop, drop, drop. We'll define two drop while we're at it. Um, so this is really typical on loops. You have certain kind of loop variables that are on top of the stack that are carried through uh, the iteration. And then once you're exiting the loop, you have to get rid of them typically. Or maybe you don't get rid of them, but certainly you have to think about what to do with them. And in this case, since a C move doesn't leave anything on the stack, we have to just straight up drop them. So um, that makes sense. That's it. Actually, it's three dot, not drop three. Um, let's see. I mean, I assume that's that. That, was, that must be at least one of. It must be a issue, an issue that we're seeing with the stack. Um, that's correct. So everything on top of the stack is 
um, you know, there's nothing on the stack. That's what I'm saying. Now you have this. Okay. Now we have four on the stack, and this is the part where it's hanging. Um, okay. I'm going to make a guess that it's related to the multi-character handling. So this worked for a single character. This did not work. Um, so just to go back here, this worked. I'm going to just re-verify that so I didn't go crazy. This worked. Um, but I bet if we write 8, this will not work. Or at least that's my hypothesis. Yep, that does not work. Um, which suggests quite clearly that the issue has to do, well, let's see, it could be an alignment issue. So maybe let's try something with, <laughs> with four characters. I guess that's not really because, let's see. The name length field misaligns, so maybe three characters. Um, Or five, I guess, if one character works. I mean, I don't think that's actually the issue, but um, it would be okay. So it actually is an alignment issue somehow. Um, or at least it appears to be. So that works. Or so or maybe it's just things of a certain length. Like this doesn't work. Oh, that's for a different reason. It's because it straight up didn't find it. Okay, that works. Two, three, four. Okay, so here it hung again. So it just could be what we're, one, two, three, four. So it could just be a length issue. Maybe I'm not using byte oriented stuff. So it's only ever, well, let's go and look at it. Um, Go and look at it. So source and dest with dest source at the bottom. Load from source as a byte. Store to dest. Um, increment both of them and return. C move. Length is on top. Check if it's non zero. There's non zero branch there. Otherwise, we're done. And we drop all three loop variables and exit. Otherwise, we rotate length to the bottom. Um, we move one character and increment those variables. We rotate length back to the top. We subtract one from the length. And we continue. And let's see what we're doing in the specific context. Um, we're doing this. So on top of the stack at this point, we have the address and the length. And we'll just call it source just to keep that straight. Um, then we push the destination on top of the stack. So yeah, we are using C comma here. To write the length. And then for this, um, OK, 
Okay, I've been going for a little close to two hours. I'm actually going to continue, but I'm just going to cut off the stream just to break it into smaller pieces. So uh, stop, I'll stop recording and restart immediately.